Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer for the third Sunday of Easter. Everything you need this morning will be on the screen um, along with our images, and we pray that you have had a restful evening and are prepared to worship God with us this morning. Um, at, at the um, conclusion of today's service, uh, you'll see a link to our new website, a companion website to the Grace uh, Cathedral website, uh, givetograce.org. We hope that you will have an opportunity to go to Give to Grace and um, discern whether you might be able to give a gift of uh, financial assistance to our church. So now thank you for being here and let us begin our worship. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. This morning, we're reading together uh, selected verses from Psalm 116. Again, let's read them together. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, 
Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Join me in reading Canticle 10. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bring forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading from the first book of Peter. If you invoke his Father, the one who judges all people impartially, according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the times of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from your heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together Canticle 18, a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood, you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders 
handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. They came near the village to which they were going. He walked on ahead as though he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was in my early teens, I came home from school one day and I was really upset about something. I was probably fighting with my best friend at the time. We tended to do that a lot. My mom was home and she asked me what was wrong. So I started to go into the details of what had happened and my mom lovingly offered suggestions, but I wasn't finished talking yet. I kept telling her more about the problem and a few minutes later, she had more suggestions. And this went on for several cycles and I became more and more upset with each suggestion. I finally looked at her and I said, Mom, I don't want advice. I just want you to listen. In the first half of today's gospel, Cleopas and another disciple are walking on the road to Emmaus. Um, and the other disciple is believed by many scholars to be Cleopas's wife. As they are walking, Jesus in the resurrected form approaches them, but they don't recognize him. And Jesus asks them questions and he listens to what they have to say. I think it's very important that Jesus did not make himself known right away. The disciples needed to talk. They needed to vent. And I believe that Jesus lets them do just that by not revealing who he is. Jesus is allowing them to process the events that just took place. 
and they might not have been able to do that if they recognized Jesus right away. It's pretty amazing that Jesus allowed them to recount everything that had happened to him because he already knew what had happened. But he lets Cleopas tell him anyways. He must have known that that is what they needed. Towards the end of Cleopas's ramblings to Jesus, it is pretty evident that they feel lost about everything that has happened over the past few days. One of their dearest friends, their teacher, was crucified. And it is the third day and Jesus is nowhere to be seen. Everything that they had put their hearts into seemed to be vanishing in front of their eyes. They feel incredibly lost and their whole world seems to be turning upside down. But Jesus doesn't offer advice immediately. He allows them to feel their pain, to feel their emotions, and he simply listens. In the second half of the gospel, the disciples asked Jesus to stay with them because it would soon be evening. And still not knowing who he actually was, they take him into their home. And Jesus takes bread, he blesses it and breaks it. And all of a sudden their eyes are opened and they are no longer lost. They see their friend and their teacher. I don't know about you, but that was a tough thing for me to hear right now as we are all separated and not able to break bread together. When I initially read this, it made me feel even more lost. I asked myself, how can I overcome being lost right now if I can't gather with my community to break bread? But then as I reflected more on this gospel, what the disciples had said to one another after Jesus had vanished is extremely powerful. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Wow. An Episcopal priest and clergy acquaintance of mine, Hilary Bogert Winkler, she was reflecting earlier this week about how morning prayer is steeped, um, is incredibly steeped in scripture and in ways that are not found in many of our other services. She said, the turn to morning prayer for the time being has had us turning into a liturgy that is even more than the Eucharist, deeply steeped in the word of God. Right now, many of us are longing for the Eucharist in ways we would not have imagined. And yet, the risen Christ is still among us, just as he was to those disciples on the road. Though they did not have the eyes to see who he truly was, I think the good news of this passage for me is that Christ is with us, not only in the breaking of the bread, but on the road. And the challenge is to look for that risen Lord and to be mindful of those moments when my heart burns within me. Hillary's words are powerful and call us to a time to feel our hearts burning for the risen one. I, like most of you, am longing 
for the day when we can break bread and come together at the altar rail. But in the meantime, I plan to pay attention to when my heart burns when the scripture is revealed to me. And my prayer is that you will join me and do the same. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God of the cross and loving God of community, we are not in a church building today, but church is never canceled. We are not wise and not often kind, but we are the body of Christ in your suffering world. We know that our vocation is to be the light of this Christ whose body we are. Give us courage to be the church and to keep our minds on what matters, which is to keep loving the world which you have called good. Buildings crumble. The church year passes, but your church endures from generation to generation. Make this for us a feast day of your protection, your plenty, your purpose, your plan, and your peace. All this we ask as we pray in silence with all the saints and with each other. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, Comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. 
This morning, I invite your prayers, your thanksgivings, and your uh, words of intercession that you wish to place before uh, God's altar this morning. We remember as we do each time we gather electronically, those who are ill, those who have died, their family members, the nurses and doctors that have attended to all of them, um, those who are working behind the scenes to find an end to coronavirus, COVID, whether that is um, in um, uh, working to find uh, an immunization route or a way to locate this uh, illness in people before it takes hold of them. We join with uh, all the saints of earth this morning who turn their prayers to God for, um, for those in the church, for those in government and leadership, for all who make decisions that impact the lives of many people. And now I leave a space for your prayers. Lord Christ, thank you for these moments together. We pray with grateful hearts for what lies before us this day, that we'll have strength to face it and uh, knowledge to know what to do. And give us grace in all that we do, walking, thinking, speaking, resting, being with others we love. Help these prayers to cross the generations and the miles this day and knit us together. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And please join me in praying a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. If you are uh, uh, coming in from uh, Grace Cathedral and part of that congregation, you've received an invitation to virtual coffee hour, and we invite you to come in um, at 9.30. And if you're watching this service at, your, uh, at the 10.30 hour, then know that it would be available in the future. Um, but uh, we thought that that was uh, we thought that that would be a good time for that offering since it's between what would normally be the two service times. You'll see other announcements on the screen. Thank you for your presence this morning. We continue to hold the entire Grace Cathedral community in prayer, and we pray that you will be faithful um, in joining us next time and on Compline services at 9 p.m. each evening. Until we see you again, God bless you.